The Father has imprinted his nature in all creation. Just as he set the stars in place and called them by name in order that a pre toer generation might be given a visual of the elements and plan of his salvation, he put many other lessons in nature to enlighten us about issues which concern us. When I first began to hear about the return of Ephraim, I asked the Lord about it. He answered me immediately with two thoughts, sea turtles and monarch butterflies, and in that moment I understood. It is written in Romans 1.20, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. I first became aware of the migration of sea turtles while working for Dr. James Richardson at the University of Georgia in the early 1990s. Dr. Richardson is an internationally recognized authority on sea turtles and has been tracking the populations in Georgia since the 1960s. The turtle that nests on Georgia beaches is called a loggerhead. The female emerges from the ocean at night, digs a hole, and lays anywhere from 100 to 126 eggs. She may nest as many as four times in a season. The eggs are subject to poachers and a variety of predators, and it is current practice for environmental workers to gather the eggs out of the nests and store them or rebury them in protected areas until it is time for them to hatch. Once out of the nest, the tiny creatures, about 5% of their adult size, make a mad dash for the sea, where they live in the shoals for a short time. Currents and seaweed carry them for years before they return to near shores as juveniles. Gradually, they grow and make their way further out into the ocean. Eventually, they swim or are carried to the Azores, a group of islands which sit in the Atlantic Ocean about 3,000 miles due east of their earth birthplace. The loggerheads remain deep in Atlantic waters until sexual maturity, about 20 to 30 years. At that time, they swim home to the exact beach upon which they were hatched in order to nest and again bring forth the next generation. It is estimated, perhaps, that only one in a thousand turtles lives long enough to reproduce. Another creature famed for its migratory habit is the graceful and colorful monarch butterfly. These insects make their homes in central Mexico or California. Each year, the current generation awakes from hibernation in February or March. They mate and begin to fly northward. The female lays eggs as she goes, as many as 1,100 in her lifetime. These eggs hatch into caterpillars within four days. The caterpillar eats voraciously and forms a chrysalis within the next 14 days. This chrysalis phase lasts 10 days, and then the butterfly hatches out. This butterfly, whose parent left Mexico some 28 days before and is now long dead, finds itself in Texas and proceeds on its northward journey, again laying eggs as it goes. The lifespan of this butterfly is anywhere from two to six weeks. It is a first-generation monarch. This cycle continues as eggs are laid and eventually hatched throughout the Midwest and eastern seaboard, and finally, the fourth generation arrives in New England or Canada by midsummer. As the weather turns cold in November, it becomes the task of this final generation to fly home to Mexico, a place it has never been, to overwinter and hibernate. This unique generation outlives its predecessors by 400 to 1,000 percent, surviving up to nine months. This is the same generation that will wake up in the spring to begin the cycle again. There are anywhere from 60 to 160 million of these insects waiting for the warming of spring. From Job 12, 7-9 And perhaps ask the beasts of the field, and they will point the way, and the bird in the heavens will declare to you. Or converse with the earth, and she will point the way, and the fishes of the ocean will tell you the story. Who of all these doesn't know that the word of Jehovah has made this? The fact that Ephraim has gone missing for 2,700 years is not news to historians. While I do not deny that many of the inhabitants of the northern kingdom fled south during difficult times, 
the fact remains that much of the population was lost in exile. While none of the tribes per se were lost, many people were assimilated over time, losing their Hebraic identity. In the end, the local inhabitants of northern Israel were replaced with peoples forced to settle there from other areas of the Assyrian Empire. There is a documented trail of Ephraim's deportation and subsequent wanderings during the next few centuries, but this trail then dissipates into oral history, local tradition, and mythological desire. The fact that Yehovah means to gather Ephraim and return him to the land is well documented in scripture and understood by the rabbis of Israel. Verses such as Isaiah 27, 13. So it shall be in that day, the great trumpet will be blown. They will come who are about to perish in the land of Assyria and they who are outcasts in the land of Egypt and shall worship Yehovah in the holy mount at Jerusalem. Also Jeremiah 31, 8 through 9. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the ends of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, the woman with child and the one who labors with child together. A great throng shall return there. They shall come with weeping and with supplications I will lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way in which they will not stumble. For I am a father to Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn. And there are other places, verses addressed exclusively to the nation of Israel as opposed to Judah. These verses cannot be denied as manifestations of Jehovah's intentions. We expect a large number of these people, perhaps as many as ten times the number of known Jews on earth today. Where is this burgeoning group of people? Simcha Jakobovich makes a convincing presentation of his research in his documentary, Quest for the Lost Tribes, released in 2003 and available through A&E. And people have already returned under this banner. The Falashas of Ethiopia and the Bnei Yisrael of India. More recently, the Bnei Menashe, or the Monmosi of Burma and Mizoram, India, have been making Aliyah. Research by others extends to the Pathans of Afghanistan, the tribes of Japan and Africa and China and Ecuador. In the same year of the DVD release, the Missouri Cherokee declared themselves to be remnants of Hebrew people who fled the Middle East after the siege of Masada. Many of these peoples have arrived at an understanding of their tribal history because of a previous Christian faith and study of Tanakh. In addition to these tribal peoples, there is an unexpected Gentile population that has come to Yehovah and Torah observance within the past two decades having been drawn there by their Messiah, Yeshua. As he said in Matthew 15, 24, I have come to seek and save what is lost. And in Luke 19, 10, I am sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. When we talk about a turtle finding the place of his own hatching, some 20 or 30 years, and thousands of miles of water after the event, it is a most remarkable phenomenon. The Creator has apparently equipped the animal with a sensory power that humans do not have, specifically that it might accomplish this task. We might call it a homing instinct. We realize that this information is transmitted genetically. If I myself, having been born a Jew and having spent time in Israel many years ago, decide to return to my homeland as a result of the call of the Holy Spirit, this is somewhat understandable. Like the turtles, I have had an experience personally, and I feel called to repeat it in some way. But the case of the monarchs is different. It is a cross-generational call that brings each group of butterflies, no matter where their hatching place along that 3,000-mile route, to the summer home up north. And the fourth and final generation finds its way home to a country that it has never seen. Imagine you are a recently hatched monarch butterfly in the middle of Kansas. You wait a moment and let your wings dry out. And then, where do you get the knowledge of how to continue flying on a path to Canada? If the creator of the universe has designed these insects to accomplish this task, it is not unthinkable that the descendants of Raphraim, even after 2,700 years, wake up in their current lands and suddenly feel the call to their ancestral home. Only in this generation, the generation since 1948 and the founding of the state, has this been possible. 
and we see it before our very eyes. And in fact, the Father has called them, as it is written in Zechariah 10, 7 through 12. The Ephraimites will become like mighty men, and their hearts will be glad as with wine, and their children will see it and be joyful. Their hearts will rejoice in Jehovah. I will whistle for them and gather them, for I have redeemed them. They will multiply as they multiplied before. Though I sow them among the nations, yet in distant lands they will remember me. They and their children will survive, and they will return. I will bring them back from Egypt, and from Assyria I will gather them. To the land of Gilead and Lebanon I will bring them, and there will not be room enough for them. And he will pass through the sea of trouble, and will smite the waves of the sea. All the depths of the Nile will dry up, and Assyrians' pride will be brought down, and Egypt's scepter will pass away. I will strengthen them in Jehovah, and in his name they will walk about, declares Jehovah. Shalom.